Here are today's top stories. The U.S. government expressed its support to the Philippines' war on drugs. The Philippine ambassador to the United Nations says the government is the best source on human rights amid this information. The DILG monitors more than 300 local officials suspected of supporting the New People's Army. And Gilas Pilipinas beats Qatar to continue its bid for the FIBA World Cup. Good day, I'm Pia Rosas Morato. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. The Philippines vows to continue its war on illegal drugs as the United States expresses its support for the government agenda. The U.S. government also reiterated its strong relationship with the Philippines. Joyce Kudis has a story. The United States Ambassador to the Philippines, Soon Kim, says the U.S. supports the Philippine government's war against illegal drugs. He made a statement before President Rodrigo Duterte during a courtesy call with U.S. Philippine Society officials at the Malacanang Palace. Ambassador Kim says Duterte had explained to them that 3 million Filipinos have been enslaved by the drug problem in the country. President Duterte said the relationship between the Philippines and U.S. remains strong. Meanwhile, presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelos says the officials also discussed the return of the Balaniga balls in the country. The U.S. Philippine Society told Duterte they are appreciative of the warm reception of the people in Balaniga when they visited there. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Joyce Cudiz. Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara sided with President Duterte's pronouncement that students who overtly support terrorist organizations may lose their scholarship. Guevara says following any leftist ideology is not unlawful, but supporting like-minded armed groups seeking to overthrow the government makes one an enemy of the state. He says freedom of speech does not enjoy absolute protection like in cases of inciting sedition. National Youth Commission Chairperson Ronald Cardena previously asked the president to order the removal of scholarships of all rebellious anti-government scholars particularly those allied with communist rebels who have been involved in the killings of government troops. The Philippine National Police hailed the anti-kidnapping group for rescuing an Australian national from his alleged kidnappers in Makati City. PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde congratulated the AKG for their accomplishment as they also arrested the alleged kidnappers. PNP spokesman Bernard Banak says, the kidnapped victim was identified as Jian Ting Chen, who was reportedly kidnapped by four Chinese nationals on February 19 in Pasay City. Reports says the suspects are members of a loan shark syndicate. They are now under the custody of PNP anti-kidnapping group. A total of 349 local officials are in the watch list of the DILG for allegedly supporting the New People's Army. Report says the suspected officials are paying protection money to the NPA. DILG Secretary Eduardo Año says the watch list includes incumbent and former officials and those who lost in elections. Those proven guilty may face imprisonment and disqualification. Año repeated his call to the public not to support candidates who are coddling communist rebels. The PNP and AFP report the presence of about 10 foreign terrorists in Mindanao. And the Laguna Lake Development Authority has a warning for establishments whose cease and desist orders were temporarily lifted. More on these and other news around the metro from Janice Cave. The Philippine National Police and Armed Forces of the Philippines are monitoring at least 10 foreign terrorists in Mindanao. This includes a Yemeni national and trained suicide bomber who is currently working with Abu Sayyaf group leader Hatib Hajan Sawajan in Patikul, Sulu. Sawajan's group has custody of the child of the suicide bombers that hit the Holo Cathedral. Meanwhile, the PNP welcomes the new law signed by President Rodrigo Duterte changing the rank classification of police. PNP spokesman Bernard Banak says using the ranking system similar to that of the military will raise their morale and clarify command responsibility. 
This will also make sure the public would not be confused in addressing police by their ranks. In other news, the Laguna Lake Development Authority assured to penalize establishments that will violate its condition for temporarily lifting of cease and desist orders on polluting Manila Bay. LLDA will reimpose the order if establishments fail to undertake the needed anti-pollution measures it specified within a 90-day period. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Still to come, the Philippine ambassador to Geneva says the government is the best source on human rights amid disinformation. State-run pension fund SSS says the expanded maternity leave law will cost an additional 7.5 billion pesos in benefits. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. The universal health care law that I signed today will guarantee equitable access to quality and affordable health care services for all Filipinos. Senator JV, kayo po yung major sponsor itong universal health care law. Uh, ano bang contribution nito sa ating uh, current healthcare system? Well, actually, it will be an enhancement of the PhilHealth law. Uh, Unang-una, uh, it is now signed by the President. Ibig sabihin, hindi na 80%, hindi na 90% ang coverage ng PhilHealth. No? It will now be 100%. Ibig sabihin, basta Pilipino ka, automatic, you will now be a member of PhilHealth and covered by the National Health Insurance. So, yan ang pinaka- Magandang balita, lahat ng Pilipino ay covered na ngayon ng filial. Secretary Duque, ano po ba yung advantage nitong universal health care law? Sa ilalim po ng universal health care law, uh, palalawigin na natin ngayon ang uh, servisyo uh, para sa pangunahin uh, yung servisyo ng uh, pangkalusugan, primary health care. Ito ang thrust sa ilalim ng atin na uh, UHC. At dito ang makikinabang ang mga kababayan natin mga mahihirap sa mga kanayunan, sa mga uh, komunidad ng atin indigenous peoples, yung atin mga upland barangays at mga libliban na mga lugar na halos hindi talaga nakakatikim ng uh, Uh, gamot o ng uh, doktor o mga health professionals ang ating mga mahihirap na mga kababayan. Sa universal health care na talaga naman pinakita ni Pangulong Duterte yung kanyang tinatawag natin sheer political will that this bill will finally be enacted into law precisely to address the gaps in service delivery for our people, especially the poor and who are at the fringes of society. The Philippine ambassador to Geneva, Switzerland, says the government is the best source of information on human rights and security. This says the Philippines expresses commitment to protect human rights, contrary to what is broadcast by local and international media. More on this from PIA Director Harold Clavite. The Philippine ambassador to the United Nations in Geneva says it is always best to verify with the government matters pertaining to human rights and security. According to Ambassador Evan Garcia, disinformation by influential groups threaten effective protection of human rights by legitimate agencies. Garcia led a Philippine delegation of senior officials that engaged with the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner in Human Rights. The delegation briefed UN representatives on the mechanisms that strongly guide Philippine institutions in their constitutional duty to uphold and protect the human rights of Filipinos. Garcia says the Philippine government is committed to human rights as a basis of national government strategy. In a recent meeting with the UN Working Group on Enforced or Involuntary Disappearances in Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Philippines presented information on 625 cases of disappearances attributed to government forces. 
that happened at the height of the internal purging of the Communist Party of the Philippines and its armed wing, the New People's Army. Garcia pointed out that this information peddled by government critics such as the CPP and PA undermines the country's sincere efforts. He says vigilance against false information is more important than ever, especially with increasing misuse of digital and cyber platforms. He adds, the UN briefing is an opportune time for the people and the world to know the real score and look forward to sustaining the dialogue. For the PNA Newsroom, this is Harold Clavita, Philippine Information Agency. The Japanese and Philippine governments signed exchanges of notes for projects worth about 1.8 billion pesos. The agreements are composed of two grants for additional support in Mindanao and one grant for the provision of train simulators in the country. The signing ceremony was led by Ambassador Koji Haneda and Ambassador Jose Laurel V. At least 1.18 billion pesos will be allocated for the improvement of socioeconomic infrastructures and water supply in the Bangsamoro region. Japan and the Philippines are expected to sign another exchange of notes worth 250 million pesos for agricultural training and further development of water supply in the Bangsamoro area. The expanded maternity leave law is expected to cost an additional 7.5 billion pesos in benefits. SSS President and CEO Emmanuel Doc says this amount is on top of the 6 billion pesos in maternity benefits dispersed in 2017. As of end of September 2018, SSS dispersed about 5.2 billion pesos worth of maternity benefits to over 240,000 members. Doc says they will look for ways to fund this benefit, even as the state-run pension fund can now impose a hike in monthly contributions following the signing of Republic Act 11199. Authorities recovered yet another block of cocaine off the coast of Sicho Sampitan, Barangay Kag CI2 in Mauban, Quezon. Members of the Mauban Police Provincial Mobile Force and the 59th Infantry Battalion retrieved the package following the tip of a student in the area. This is the third block recovered in Quezon Province, the first two being from Barangay San Jose in Mauban and Barangay Villa Manzano, Norte in Perez. Locals who are able to recover cocaine packages are offered a sack of rice in exchange for the contraband. The LTFRB reminds candidates in Cagayan de Oro to get permits for campaign materials in vehicles. Meanwhile, about 200 members of Bantay Buke take their oath to protect the environment. More on this and other stories from the provinces from Janice Cave. In Cagayan de Oro City, the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board in Region 10 is accepting applications from candidates who want to place campaign materials on public utility vehicles. Applicants are required to pay 5,000 pesos for the first two PUVs and 200 per unit for the succeeding vehicles. The ads must not also cause a traffic hazard or inconvenience to the driver and passengers. In Tanawan City, Batangas, the Department of Science and Technology and FIVOLX have established the first volcano monitoring station near Taal Volcano. The Tanawan station, which directly observes Taal, is the 13th seismic observation station in Batangas. In Davao City, over 200 members of Bantay Bukid took their oath to protect and preserve the environment. Bantay Bukid will serve as the city's forest rangers, which will prevent environmental destruction through littering and other small destructive activities. Bantay Bukid works in accordance to Mayor Sara Duterte's priority agenda to preserve the environment. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Up next, the Chinese government says it does not tolerate the assault of a Chinese national on a policeman in the viral Taho Tantrum video. Gilas, Pilipinas beats Qatar to continue its bid for the FIBA World Cup. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders.
universal health care law that is signed today will guarantee equitable access to quality and affordable health care services for all Metro Manila welcomed Miss Universe Catriona Gray on her return to the country as she graced a crowd with her presence in the four-hour homecoming parade. The crowds watched with excitement to see the beauty queen as the parade passed through Pasay, Manila and Makati. Gray boarded a float patterned after her signature Mayon gown while she wore a green and white pantsuit with Sampaguita and Anahaw patterns. The Bicolana beauty also took time to greet her fans pose for the cameras and dance along with the marching band. Gray is here in the country to crown her successor in the 2019 Binibining Pilipinas pageant. Fans who missed her homecoming parade can see her again in another parade this Saturday at the Araneta Center. There will also be a Thanksgiving show for Gray on February 24 at the Smart Araneta Coliseum. The Chinese government assures President Duterte that it will not tolerate the act of the Chinese woman who was caught on video throwing taho at the cop on February 9. Chinese Ambassador Chao Jinhua made the assurance during his courtesy call at the Malacanang Palace on Wednesday. He says the ambassador encouraged the government to prosecute foreign nationals who violate our laws in the same way that China will prosecute erring foreigners. Chao also extended President Xi Jinping's invitation to attend the Belt and Road Forum in April this year. Gilas Pilipinas is still in the race for the FIBA World Cup as they defeated Qatar in the Asian qualifiers this morning. The national basketball team got the much-needed win to stay alive in the Asian qualifiers, dropping Qatar 84-46 at the Al Jarafa Sports Club in Doha early Friday, Philippine time. While both teams began the game slow, Qatar had a better start than Gilas, even taking an 11-8 lead with 4 minutes and 6 seconds left in the period. Gilas then began the second half with big leads led by triples by Paul Lee and Andre Blash and continued their streak until the end. Gilas eventually outscored Qatar 31-9 in the third quarter and never looked back. Latch announced his return to Gilas with a double-double of 17 points and 15 rebounds with 7 assists, 2 blocks and 2 steals. Meanwhile, 30 Ravina went scoreless in his debut with a senior team but he had one assist in nearly 13 minutes of play. Art is a form of therapy and expression for most people. In San Mateo Rizal, a group of artists showcase their best works while teaching children to create their own art. Joyce Kudis filed this report. To build an audience of art enthusiasts, a group of artists has launched a month-long art exhibit in a shopping mall in San Mateo Rizal. The San Mateo Artist Guild displayed some of its most precious art perks last Sunday. About 20 artists showcased their paintings in the fair that has sparked a growing interest. Since Mayor Cristina Diaz and Rizal's homegrown coffee artist, Ella Hippolito, formed the group last year. Unlike most artists who prefer steel objects as inspiration, June Mendiola enjoys painting subject in motion to immortalize the memory of his family, pets, and nature. Ella Hippolito showcased a watercolor series of Chinese New Year that sums up the colorful and calming nature of the Chinese tradition. On the other hand, Neo Jesus shared his mixed-media series depicting abstract interpretations of modern-day art and social strata. Apart from creating a vibe of inclusiveness, the group also aims to expand its skills in painting to the kids of the Autism Society of the Philippines San Mateo chapter. Its members teach the kids to draw and eventually paint on canvas bags, which they can sell as part of their fundraising projects.
The art show, which carries the theme Artsy Heart, creating happy experiences with heart, will be open for viewing until February 28. For the PNA newsroom, I'm Joyce Goodies. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Let's take another look at today's top stories. The U.S. government expressed its support to the Philippines' war on drugs. The Philippine ambassador to the United Nations says the government is the best source on human rights amid this information. The DILG monitors more than 300 local officials suspected of supporting the New People's Army. And Gilas Pilipinas beats Qatar to continue its bid for the FIBA World Cup. Thank you for watching another edition of the Pine Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the Pine website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know from the Pine Newsroom. I'm Pia Rosas Morato. Good day.